Next technique is called gift of destruction. This one has an A, B, and a C. Um, for yellow belts going to orange belt, you only need to concern yourself with the A version. We will go back and look at the B and C if you want to look at that because you're looking at the tape. You can, but otherwise stop looking, stop looking. No. Um, gift of destruction, anything that is a gift is a handshake, probably from that full Trojan horse, don't look a gift horse in the mouth, etc., etc. Someone here is grabbing for a handshake. They are either trying to squeeze your fingers or they're going to say, you know, do one of those macho things that guys do. Go, oh yeah. And they're gonna and they're gonna do that whole macho thing. Yeah. The thing that we need to be most concerned about though is someone who's a lefty, like Ron is a lefty, him trying to hit me with that punch to the face. Interesting little side note, the reason that people shake with the right hand is most people are right-handed and they use them for weaponry. Originally, before it used to be this way to check to see if they had anything up their sleeve. Like magicians say, nothing up my sleeve. Well, they're usually talking about weapons. Then it, it changed down to this. It's just letting people know, hey, I don't have anything in my hand. He doesn't have anything in this hand. This hand's got a whole handful of fists. And he's thinking about giving me a gift. Well, the gift of destruction is the left hand. So. But what I'm going to do first is I'm going to check off his width and his height and his depth. So I can do that all three at once. I'm going to, 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 check, off, um, to check off one at a time. I'm going to show you how they check, check off one. You're going to try and turn his wrist if at all possible. You're going to yank him to the side, checking off his width. Yank him down, so you're going to pull him down to your right hip. It's, it's canceling out that left hand. Now he can't do that. The other thing that's going to be more important, or just as important anyway, is I'm going to step offline and do that. I'm going to step off and I'm going to use my left hand. I'm going to push up against his elbow to keep him from elbowing me in the head as I go by and to keep doing anything with that uh, left hand. So I'm going to step off, turn, palm, yank all at the same time. I'm going to, I'm going to leap onto one foot. A leap is to go from one foot to the other foot. So I'm going to be here. I'm, I feel it coming. I'm going to leap onto one foot. At the same time, I'm going to do a knee to the gut. I've heard arguments for going straight in. I've heard arguments for going to the side. Um, I prefer going in at a side angle. That's my preference. I've heard valid arguments for both. So from here, I'm going to yank. Very important to give a good yank, a check, and a knee. So here it comes. We're standing here. Stand up right here. You're coming up. You're, you're looking menacing. I'm going to say, oh, no, something mean is coming. I'm going to step through here. Once I have my knee up in his gut, I see some people, especially beginners, they're going to want to step here, right down in front of him. That does not fit with the move the meat bag philosophy. From here, you want to step through your target, knocking him off balance, stepping the inside, checking. You could even check out his base depending where you knee check. Then from here, um, as you step in, this hand that was here is going to turn over, and you're going to use the blade part of your hand right here to Pull your hand up. It's possible that even after cracking him in the groin, that he might still be squeezing my hand. Well, I can't deliver that elbow to his head if I can't get rid of that hand. So when I check here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna step in, clear this out of the way, and then check. So what it's gonna look like, I don't think we did a speed up, sped up version of this one, it's gonna be this. <coughs> I'm going to hit him in here. I've got him off balance. I'm up in his business. I've got my left hand checking, and I just hit him side of the face. So again, break it down some more. Check, pull, down, checking his height, stepping up here to further check off his left hand. As I knee, same time, it's going to be a hop, all at the same time. Checking this one to pull your hand out as you step out. Pull your hand out. Close kneel stance, you notice. Unwind. This gives you that extra torque. Not only are we going to be twisting to do that elbow, excuse me, we're going to elbow in the head at the same time. Let's look at the other side. So from here, let's go again. So I'm going to check here. Rolling. Checking. I'm close in, close in here, knee to knee. I've, I've used a little frictional pull with the back of my hand as I roll that in, pulling my hand out, cracking them upside the head. That's the A version that yellow belts going to orange belt need to know. I'm going to briefly go through the B and the C version, different ways of people doing things. With the B version, which you don't need to know from orange belt, you just can go back and learn it later, don't learn ahead. Um, you can step off, 
First, you're going to step off and check and pull at the same time. We're not going to be jumping on and kneeing yet because we're saying, what are we, what's going on here? I don't know. But first thing I know is, oh my God, I'm going to get out of the way. Then from here, we're going to roll it over using a couple fingers and we're going to pull at the joint, holding here and we're going to turn. We're going to rotate into a forward bow, turning his wrist at the same time we're pulling back here, elbowing right into the gut, knee to the groin. As you step back, your left hand is going to slide down his wrist. This is where it gets a little snazzy here. Left thumb on the back of his hand, right between his um, second and his last two fingers. You're going to squeeze the meaty part of his hand, not touch, not on his wrist, just the meaty part of his thumb. You're going to have your hand here at the fingers. You're going to rotate, maintaining contact. Then you're going to step behind. Elbow is going to come to his chest. This is going to go pushing him down on the ground. We have a cement floor here, so I'm going to be a little kind. Um, reviewing it again. Here, you see I'm turning, going over, rotating, elbow, knee. This hand is going to come straight from this position. It's going to roll down the flat part of the hand, straight down because it's going to stop where his thumb is. The web of my hand is going to stop right at that will not where his wrist is. When I'm, if I'm going down this way, my thumb's already going to be in position. Fingers are going to go a meaty part of his hand. Then I'm going to pull back on his handshake, wring out his fingers. Now I'm going to do all that when I'm here. One, I'm going to be coming here. I'm going to do knee, drop down to here. As I'm coming back up for the turn, that's when I'm going to be doing that. I'm going to step behind him, hip to hip, thereabouts. I'm going to have my elbow on his chest. I'm squeezing, squeezing here, thumb here, pushing him down. He's going to go down. Let's go see from the other side. Checking, coming over the top, elbowing, knee as I slide down. I'm going to pull here. See, again, I have left thumb. The left, my left fingers are in the meaty part of his thumb. I'm going to be stepping up and bringing this out. I'm not going to be letting go at any point. So I'm just going to be rolling my hand over the top and dropping down. Now this is going to be done. I'm just going to do the air for a sec. One, two, knee, bounce, and I'm going to step behind. So we're this, this, from here, the only reason we're coming back down is just to touch the ground, to get stabilized, recheck your grounding. Because if we try and go here and here, we're not as likely to succeed and take him down, we're more likely to fall on top of him. So, when we come back down, one, two, three, and drop him down, and of course you can punch him in the face. Um, the third one is compliments of Mike Lambert in Maryland. He showed this one to me <laughs> without warning me, and I ended up eating carpet. So, um, when someone knows it's coming, they can balance a little better. I guarantee you that if you don't know it's coming, you're going to end up with your face in the carpet, cement, or whatever. You feel this coming, we're going to do an inverted ball kick using a right hand to the, a right leg, excuse me, to the inside of their um, left leg. You're going to turn this way. At the same time that you are yanking this viciously down, I'm just going to do it in the air because I don't want to knock you out on this one. It's going to just look like this. That's what it's going to look like. You're going to be using this here. You're going to, um, you're going to be grabbing, checking. You can even use it to pull. Boom. Pull straight down. Kick their legs straight out. If they don't know what's coming, they won't know what hit them. You probably from that point won't need to do the elbow, but if for some reason they have not fallen on their face, you can step down low and do a lifting elbow to bring them back up in case you want to hit them some more. But for the most part, it's just a inverted or retarded ball kick to the inside, shooting their leg out, boom, they're going to be down here with their arm up in the air in all likelihood. Vicious. That is part three of Gift of Destruction. It is only needed to be played with after. You do not need it for yellow belt going to orange belt. Yellow to orange just need that A, stop, hits elbow. That is Gift of Destruction.